All right. Where are you going? Go. Okay. Well, let's um, let's go ahead and take a comfortable seat. We're going to do a variety of things today. Some of it will be going back to working with this um, information we have in regards to our pelvis, just remembering, you know, that we have the whole iliac crest and the sacrum and that we want these bones to move separately as they're designed to do, but sometimes they become um, some restrictions along the SI joint can affect that movement of, of one of those anomalies. But hopefully you're touching into the, these bones and continuing to put your awareness in there. Let's see, and there was an article I read um, in The Guardian this morning, a, a study that was done with, with mice, but, but the study was really showing that the bones, um, the bones and exercise in regards to how we exercise and how that stimulates the bones is not only important just for the, the bone, um, the bone stability or the bone structure, but also they are finding in regards to working with mice anyway, that um, it affects also uh, memory that actually what gets released from the bones is also a communication network to the muscles and it seems to affect the mind. So, yay, we're just gonna keep moving and keep exercising and moving for, you know, as much as you can, as long as you can. <laughs> because it's not only just good for your structure, it's good for, for all of you. And that's not shocking. But it's uh, scientifically, it is um, interesting because it has never, of course, been looked at in that light. Or it has been, but it hasn't been able to be uh, kind of demonstrated and shown through some science. So, so that ought to be interesting. But at any rate, let's go ahead and take a comfortable seat. And um, looks like Diego's taking a seat over there. But he's here too. So there you go. But go ahead and um, rest your hands on the tops of your thighs. Lengthen your spine. And once again, it's nice to, to just take a moment to notice how your body meets the surface below you. And go ahead and begin to deepen your breath. Either beginning with your ujjayi breathing, that victorious breath, the breath that brings cohesion to your body. Or if, if Ujjayi just adds too much information for your mind, your mind starts getting in there and going, is this it? Is that? Then just simply do a balanced inhale and exhale. Whichever one you have chosen, can you make the breath smooth? Can you balance that one-to-one -one ratio?
Sometimes it seems we must create distance to unite, to make space from divisiveness. Those notions that would divide and conquer us need to be acknowledged, then released. Binary options rarely reflect the truth of our deepest connections with ourselves, within ourselves, or to one another. We are not this or that, but rather this and that. The mind includes separation based on perceived differences. The differences are real, but the separateness is not. It seems there's no getting away from ourselves or one another, participating in the same being as we do. Everyone's first name is I am. The remaining particulars are just a gloss, window dressing on that which is essential and shared among us all. A common ground from which we cannot escape and would not try to if we rested for a moment in that shared source, which enlivens every one of us. And when we dare to say of another, you are, that is sufficient of an acknowledgement to embrace anything else is an imposition. I am and you are, I acknowledge your being and mine. One body, many textures, differential movement without separation. One body, many textures, differential movement without separation. That is the mantra our body gives to us. With that, we can commit to achieving our independence from thoughts and ideas that would otherwise seem to separate us from ourselves or one another. At the bottom of your next exhale, release any control on the breath. And honoring, honoring you, honoring yourself, honoring each other, bring the hands in front of your heart. This making um, the effort often just to uh, deepen our commitment to goodness. So I'll open the practice. I'm going to chant the sound of Om. The vibration of sound through the body. So see if you chant, just feel that vibration through your own body and again out into the space around you. Chanting Om and singing Loka Samasta Supino Bhavantu. Taking a deep inhale. Ah.
With your next exhale, you can bow your head towards your heart. Release your hands and lift your gaze. Okay, let's take a simple twist. Let's inhale the arms halfway. Reaching out through the fingers, relaxing the tops of your shoulders, and then exhale, turning to the right. Deep breathing in through the nose and out through the nose. And again, you can just place your felt sense in that left side, right above the pelvis, all the way up along the spine and side body. At the bottom of the next exhale, with the inhale, you come back to center. Inhale the arms halfway. Exhale, turning the other way. So dropping back to that, that either the ujjayi breathing or that balanced inhale and exhale. Taking um, one more deep inhale. And this time on the exhale, come back to center. We're gonna side bend. So you might want a block to go off to the right. And inhale, reach the left arm up. Exhale, side bending. So notice there's the there's the straight side bend, which you know if you're kind of like just going sideways, you're gonna hit a place where you're like, that's as far as you can kind of go. It's really hard to get more. But if you if you simply change just a little forward, you just ask the the lower left rib pelvis, this happens actually in the hip joint, to to just rotate a little forward, you're going to find a deeper side bend. So we want the back body to be as broad as the front body. In other words, sometimes when we side bend, we're actually doing almost a little back bend. So I don't want you back bending right now. I want you Side bending, but really expanding the back. And then with your next inhale, come up. Exhale, rest. Inhale, lift your right arm. Exhale, walk it out. And even after you do that initial kind of similar to side angle, where you just reach a little from the back waistline, and then you might turn the heart up towards the sky. And then we're gonna inhale, come up. Great, and exhale, release. All right, bravo. Let's come over to puppy pose. We'll come off of the blankets or whatever you're sitting upon. Move those off to the side and come into a, a puppy pose. So walk the hands forward, keep the hips up. Lengthen the spine as you strongly reach so that the outer edge of your shoulder blades toward your upper arms. Back of the neck is long. And then let's walk the hands back. 
will be on all fours if that works for you. If all fours is not a good option, you could do go to sitting. You're going to take a cat and cow in sitting or else you're going to take a cat and cow in on all fours. So you're in table and when you're ready, inhale cat to cow pose. Exhale, cat. And again, do that again, using your breath. So there's extension of the spine is cow, opening the front of the spine, and flexion of the spine is cat. If you're on all fours, come to table. And exhale. Left foot back, right arm out to the side. I've got my left toes on the ground, right arm is reaching out, and my right palm is facing the floor. And I want to find a little tone in the, in the deep transversus abdominis, right? The deepest abdominal layer that's compressing the abdominal organs, drawing them up towards the spine. And then let's pick up the back leg, reach the opposite arm forward. So lifting your abdominal organs up towards the back of your body. Exhale, lower the knee and the hand gracefully. Inhale in the middle, exhale, cat. Inhale, table. Exhale, right leg back, left arm out. I like the toes to be on the ground just to give me a moment to really connect into that deep low belly. So I really got my deepest abdominal layer coming on board so that when you now pick up your leg and you reach your arm forward. So this isn't just the, the deepest transversus, but there's also tone through the front of the spine, the multifidi, those little muscles at the front of the spine. What about the back of the diaphragm? Also the, the throat, remember the hyoid, if you were around last week. Exhale, lower. Inhale, cow. Exhale, cat. Inhale, table, tuck the toes under and exhale, downward facing dog or puppy, downward dog or puppy. So if you're in a downward dog pose, take a moment, look back at your feet, notice the inner and the outer heels. Are you reaching evenly to the inner and outer heel? Are you also actively reaching, whether you're in puppy or dog, shoulder blades toward the upper arms and all the way to the hands, the finger pads and an index finger knuckle. And then as you deepen your breath, and where do you feel the breath? Great, so let's take one more deep inhale and then we'll exhale. If we're in dog, we're gonna walk the hands toward the feet. If you're in a puppy, you'll just walk the hands back. On all of us are gonna come up to stand. And bring the hands back in front of your heart. Yeah, warming up, right? Getting warmer. Even though this is the first we've come to standing, but you already feel there's a little more heat in your body, right? I don't know how much light you need here, but I'll turn those guys on. Okay, I want to do um, a shoulder opener. Mm, I'm gonna tilt my camera up a little more for this. So this shoulder opener, in a moment, you'll, you'll find a spot in a wall 
This time it'll be just a little different than we've been doing. So this time you're gonna take the fingers parallel to the ground. So you're not gonna be up here. It's gonna be about shoulder height. And don't go do it quite yet. When you, when you turn, um, you know we have this little cap at the top of the shoulder, right? The deltoid, and there's a posterior deltoid at the back. There's the middle, and there's the front. And you're gonna work a little bit with the back one. So, so when you're here and you're, you're closer to the wall than usual, then you'll turn both feet away from the wall. Let the elbow relax and take the posterior deltoid down and back. Let it relax back, okay? You can go to a wall. I am still gonna step my, my wall leg a little forward. Not a lot, a little. So there you are, you've got your fingers parallel to the um, crown. You might have your forearm on the wall, you don't have to. But can you, can you take the, the posterior deltoid and let it release back and down? I'm still, you know, I've got my right foot, I've got my right arm up and my right foot is slightly forward. Now, I'm also going to, this is optional, of course, take my left ear a little towards my left shoulder. I might take my chin a tiny bit towards my throat. Then I'm gonna lift my chin back up, lift my head back up, and then I'll turn back towards the wall and relax my right arm down. Okay? If you have a question, you're welcome to unmute and ask a question. But you're going to take the second side, you're going to reach your uh, left arm out, fingers parallel with the ground, and then start to turn the feet and the torso maybe comes a little right. So as you turn right, watch, does the front of the left shoulder, I don't want that popping towards the, the, the wall. If you release, your the back of your left shoulder that posterior deltoid down that should help and i might step my left foot just a little forward not a lot the left elbow has a, it can be bent And then I might, you might consider taking right ear towards the right shoulder. Back up. Just then with the head back up, just turning the nose toward the right. And then turn back towards the wall. Great. All right, let both arms dangle. Oh, 
Okay. Then can we take the um, hands in Anjali Mudra and the forearms on the wall? Hands in Anjali Mudra, forearms are at the wall, and you're going to slide the elbows up, and then step the right foot back, left foot back, hips back, and bring a little lift to the um, back of the diaphragm. Elbows are shoulder width, but they're as high up the wall as you can get them. I'm pressing into that wide part of my forearm. And I'm still reaching my outer shoulder blade toward my upper arm bone. Okay, and then go ahead and step back towards the wall, slide the arms down. Okay, now let's come back onto your mat. And then go ahead and take a, um, a warrior two width stance. The width of warrior two. <clears throat> so let's turn, we'll go right foot out first. Left, your left foot in, your right foot out, your left foot in, and inhale, take the arms out. So you take the arms out, relax that posterior deltoid back and down, inhale deeply, and exhale, warrior two. You know, stay connected to the back body and then turning the gaze toward the right. Can you go back to the balanced breath? And then let's turn the palms skyward and we'll inhale, lift the arms. Exhale, release your arms, make the feet parallel, relax both arms, spin the feet the other way. Inhale, lift the arms. Exhale, warrior two. Relax, see the, the shoulders, but especially the posterior, the back of the deltoid. The gaze can be out over the front fingers. Go back to your breathing. I know there's a lot of strength. Wonderful. That's good. Turn the palms skyward. Inhale, lift the arms straight in the front leg. Exhale, release both arms and we'll step the feet back together. <laughs> I'm seeing Jade rubbing on, on that camera. That's so cute. Hands in front of the heart. <clears throat> All right, let's inhale, lift both arms. <laughs> and exhale your hands back in front of your heart. Again, inhale, lift both arms. Exhale the hands in front of the heart. One more time, inhale, lift both arms. Urdhva Hastasana. 
Exhale, bow forward for a moment. Uttanasana, all the way down. Let's inhale, come all the way up. Exhale, hands in front of the heart. Step the feet wide apart. We're setting up for side angle. Let's have uh, both of our blocks available. And we're going to take, you're going to your right again. But we're going to go from a side angle on, on your right to a plank. So um, sometimes you might want the blocks. You can still have both on, the, on your right side, and then you'd move one, but just have them both kind of on that side that you're going towards so they'll be available. And then inhale the arms out. Exhale, side angle, Parshva Konasana. And there's that, that place again where we get to really explore the, our ability to, to put our awareness into that space at the top of the, your left ilia, one at the back leg, and, and how from that crest you reach to the heel. And then can you get right above that bony crest and release that up towards the lower ribs. Now we're gonna exhale and turn towards the ground. Turning towards the ground, picking up the back leg. There's a low lunge right there with the back heel lifted. Hands can be on blocks. Let's come, let's take this into an upright lunge. So begin to come to fingertips. And then arms out and come upright. Let's inhale the arms back out. Exhale to plank. Inhale in plank pose. Exhale downward facing dog. Inhale deeply. Exhale, let's walk the hands to your feet. Walk the hands to your feet. Inhale, come all the way up. Exhale, your hands in front of your heart. And then you can walk back towards the center of your mat. You're gonna take your second side so you can move your box again. Left foot out, right foot in. Blocks <clears throat> on any height, any level. Inhale the arms out. Exhale, side angle pose, partial Konasana. Felt sense in that place at the top of the right pelvis. Expanding that in two directions from there. When exhale, turn towards the ground and take a, a low lunge with the back knee lifted. Balancing the weight in the hips. So the feet have to be hip distance. Exhale, 
Inhale, upright. Inhale the arms out. Exhale, bow forward. Step to plank pose. So in your plank, there's the, that deep transversus, but also there's tone. It's coming all the way from pelvic floor, has a little tone, front of the spine, all the way up to the throat. Passing through the diaphragm. Exhale, downward facing dog. Walk your hands to your feet. And inhale, come up. Exhale, hands in front of the heart. Relaxing the arms. Great. Okay, let's take your strap for a moment. <clears throat> mm -hmm. All right, so you've got your strap. And let's take this strap and lift the arms up. <clears throat> All right, we're going to go a little wider on the strap. We're going to keep the elbows straight here. And now, um, remember the posterior deltoid. Relax it back and down and maybe go a little wider. Reaching all the way from the shoulder joint through the arms to the hands as you come back. We don't want there to be any little places where you are hopping over something. You want this to be really smooth. So you take your strap again. Inhale, lift the arms up. Exhale, go a little wider. And then releasing the, that back, posterior deltoid releases back. And slowly reaching from the shoulder all the way up to through the bones, the arms, all the way to the hands. One more time. <clears throat> Inhale, lift the arms. Exhale, slide out. Keep going. Remembering that posterior deltoid. Sliding back, back, and down. Okay. Mm. From there, let's take a, a Gomukhasana arms because I feel a, a need. If you'll take your strap in your left hand, and then you're gonna bring that um, left arm, you go, you're gonna bring it up and around. Now the palm faces back, now it faces the ground, it's all the way around. So now you've got your, your strap is, is dangling. And you're gonna take your bottom hand your right one, and just grab onto the strap. It doesn't matter how high. You might just grab onto it right about the level of the sacrum or something. And then as you slide the back forearm across your body, so you're bringing the elbow closer to the um, midline, then you can walk up your strap some. And keeping that, so you feel the back forearm is, is on, on, the, um, on the body. Your, your back arm is rotated in. And the top arm, can you go ahead and reach up, 
Reach all the way up to your elbow. Lengthen all the way down into your um, foot of the lifted arm side. And then we'll release the bottom arm. And we'll bring the top arm out and down. And second side, so putting the, the strap in that hand, bringing it around, back. So there's that elbow pointing a little more skyward. The back hand is going to be palm down. Reaches behind you, just grabs onto the strap, slide that forearm across the back body, and then begin to walk that hand somewhere. So here really on the, on the down arm, you're allowing that deltoid to be broad in the back. It's narrower in the front, broader in the back. On the lifted side, lengthen. Lengthen all the way up. And also from the deep belly, reach into that standing leg of the lifted arm. There's a little side bend, a slight side bend. And then let's release the bottom arm, top arm. Let both arms rest. All right, let's um, sit the strap down. Bring your blocks back to being at the top of your mat. We're gonna take um, a sun salutation and I might want um, a blanket handy because at some point I'm going to put my back knee to the floor. All right. So taking a stance, hands in front of the heart. Connecting to your breath. And then with your next inhale, Release the hands and lift your arms. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway. Exhale, right foot back. Inhale, upright. Inhale, arms out. Exhale, plank. Inhale in your plank pose. Stay there, if it's all right there. Inhale, come to the toes. Exhale, lower the knees to the chest. Inhale, cobra. Exhale, lower. Inhale to all fours. Exhale, plank, downward facing dog or puppy. Deep breathing, please. Inhaling deeply, the next exhale. Uh, what is that? Left foot forward? The other side, anyway. Inhale, upright. Exhale, 
Inhale, the arms up. Exhale, bow. Inhale, step the back foot forward. Exhale, fold. Inhale, halfway. Exhale, bow forward. Inhale, all the way upright. Exhale, your hands in front of your heart. Inhale, lift both your arms. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway. Exhale, right foot back. So I'm gonna pull, if I don't have, you know, good padding, I'm gonna pull my, put my blanket under there and bring that back knee down. Relax the top of the back foot. Bring the box up tall. Okay. And then can you can you go into that space that's um, above the right pubic bone and between the right upper pubic bone and the right inner hip joint and add a little tone right there. A little tone. See what happens at the back of the sacrum and that whole uh, pelvic area. So even as you're opening, there's just a little tone in the belly right there. Then we're going to tuck the back toes under and come back into a low lunge. Let's shift the blocks forward so that they're framing your front foot, your left foot. Bring that right block close to the left big toe. And here, can you, on the, on the left side, can you take left hand on your hip, lift a little bit the abdominal organs, that are on the left, so you're going to make some space in that left front hip joint between the pubic bone and the inner hip. So lift it into the back body. Abdominal organs draw back as you rotate towards your left. You might, you might take the left arm along the left ear. And then we're gonna release back to center. Move the block out of the way and step forward. Uttanasana, forward fold. Inhale halfway. So when you inhale halfway, there's length through the front of the spine. Exhale, let's step the left foot back. Bring the left knee down. Let's make the blocks tall so that you've got and pull them back. So here, a little tone between the pubic bone and the upper inner left hip joint. Just so that we're not trying to stretch any of the ligaments. We're simply, even as we lengthen the top of the left thigh, but we're still supporting what's happening at the front of the left hip.
Then let's tuck the back toes under of the left leg. Pick up that, night, that back knee so you're back in your low lunge. And you can bring your blocks forward, framing the right foot, but bringing that, that left hand block can be closer to the right big toe. We've done this before where we've had a strap around the lower, the, the right knee and the left arm. You might imagine that. Let's take right hand on the hip and take the abdominal, the deep, deep abdominal organs up and back to meet the front of the sacrum, especially on the right, because you're gonna twist to your right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what happens at the back of the sacrum, on the front of it, but also the, the back of it. And you might add the arm, but you don't have to. There's a lot happening. And then turn back towards the ground. Move the block. Step forward. Uttanasana. And then hands to the hips. Let's inhale, come up. Exhale, hands in Anjali Mudra. And then we'll release the arms. Great. Okay. Now uh, I'm going to move my blanket off of my mat for now. Come into midline, and I'm going to take a wide-legged forward fold. So feet wide apart, make them parallel. If you need blocks, bring them forward so you've got them. Hands up on the hips. And, and again, you can get this sense about the crest of the pelvis. I get that whole space. And bow forward. Wide-legged forward fold. Hands to, um, let's go downward dog arms with your hands so they might be on blocks, whatever you need in order to keep the knees straight. And then let's walk the hands back and shift them to your hips and come up to standing. Step the feet back together. We're going to take a tree pose, Vrikshasana, which stand on the right foot first. So if you want to be by a wall, you can shift over towards a wall. <clears throat> Then when you're ready, just shift the weight into the right leg, all the way up that, that right inner thigh, front of the spine on the right. Diaphragm comes through all the way up to where is the, um, the throat. Arms in any position. Release the arms and step down. So whether your leg, foot comes up that high, it, it doesn't matter. You don't have to take it that high. You might just have the foot at the lower shin. But the same action is happening, you know, whether it's at the, the lower shin or bridging the knee or the inner thigh. You're still wanting to stand up and over the that. Um, inner thigh of the standing leg. Let's check the other side. Good. 
inner thigh. There's tone at the, there's the front of the spine. Where's the back of the throat? And can the gaze be straight ahead? Release the arms. Step down. Great. Mountain pose. What's happening at the back of the sacrum in your mountain pose? Where's the weight in your feet? If you shift the weight into the heels, is the weight, can you feel that full shape of the back of the heel? And then we'll let that go. Great. Okay. Um, I want to. Uh, I want to offer up a, a pigeon pose or figure four. So um, if I'm going to take a pigeon, I'm going to take a blanket and put it at the top of my mat, and I'll just. Uh, Tilt this down a little. If I'm taking figure four, which we know, then you'll want to, you know, come down so you can um, still pad the ground. Otherwise, if you're coming down to the to a pigeon, the way I like to take it would be, I'm going to go sideways. It's just going to be easier for me to show you what's happening. All right, so I have a blanket out here. That's gonna be my knee and shin. And when I come into this, I sometimes go from downward dog so that right knee is gonna go out to the right, left leg straight back. So my left heel is actually at the left. I mean, my right heel is at the left inner hip. And then I could take I could take blocks to put my forearms on, so I could come down to my forearms on blocks. Or maybe I take my forearms. But if your knees bother you, and I'm happy to report this used to really give my knees, I, um, I couldn't do it anymore, but now I don't have any problems with the knees, so there's hope. But I am. If you're on figure four, you've got the little toe side of the right foot at the top of the left thigh, balancing the weight to the left. And if you're in pigeon, you're gonna lift a little at the, the, the belly, just a little tone in the belly. So there's some support at the back of the sacrum. If I'm in pigeon, if I'm in pigeon, at the right outer knee, I'm going to broaden that. I'm going to tone the right inner knee and broaden the right outer knee. Okay, and let's um, switch sides, whichever you're in, whether you're in figure four or maybe you were in pigeon pose. If I was in pigeon, I like to sometimes visit downward dog first before taking the other side. If you're in figure four, where you have the little toe side of the left foot, left outer heel at the top of the right knee, 
Just notice where's the weight in your sacrum and take it a little to the right. If you're in pigeon, broaden the outer left knee there so that you're going to create more space at the outer left knee and, and a little tone at the inner left knee. All right, great. Okay, and then all of us will come out of our pose. If you're in figure four, just undo that and bring both feet to the ground. If you were in pigeon, take downward facing dog. We're all going to meet up, though, on our backs with the feet on the floor. Knees bent, feet on the floor. All right. So let's, let's, um, Inhale and just come into a, a small bridge. So we, we were not adding the arm part. Let's just lift the pelvis up. Take your fingers to the those two hip points, the ASIS. Fingers on those. You get a sense of those. And lower. And again, let's lift the hips. So we're not doing a full a full bridge because we're not lifting the, uh, you know, I don't know, I'm not adding the whole lift of the chest. Can you, in this pigeon with the fingers on that ASIS, if you unweight your left foot, does the pelvis stay level? If you pick up your left foot, is your pelvis still level? Put it down and pick up the right. Now the right ASIS will drop back, but is the pelvis still lifted level? So you feel the right one, the right ASIS kind of drop back, bring the right foot down, pick up the left. Down, right. Down and again, left. Right. Excellent. Great. Both the pelvis is still up. Awesome. And then we'll bring it down. Now, let's take, um, bring the, the right knee up and put the right hand at the top of the right thigh and you're gonna push the two against each other. You're pushing right hand to right knee. And release. And then uh, lift up the left hand um, knee and place resistance. So as you push into your left hand, so these two are working um, against each other. And put that down. 
All right, do you have a blanket nearby that you can take your blanket, fold it in half lengthwise, and then can you put that underneath your pelvis? Okay. I think I want another blanket under there for a little more height. I get this. So I'm going to put another blanket, same, same fold on top. I want my pelvis to have a little more height. So I've got two blankets under my pelvis. And I'm going to bring left knee to the chest and I'm going to grab behind my left knee, pulling my left knee in. Take the right leg out. And then we're going to switch. Slide the right foot up, bring the right knee in. I'm going to put my hands behind my right knee and then put my left foot on the ground and then slide my left leg out. Okay. And then slide the left foot up, left foot's on the ground. And let's bring both knees up, both knees up. Hands can be, go behind the knees. We can circle the, the ankles. That sounds like a good idea. Maybe just one at a time. I don't want to crash into each other. All right. And then we're going to take the knees away. And slowly bring them back to the ground, great. Hmm. Deep breathing. Then let's bring both knees up and let's grab on to the shins. Take the knees as wide as just beyond your shoulders. Yeah, a hold of the shins. So it's a, a happy baby kind of thing. Now we're going to take the knees wide, the feet toward each other as reclined Baddha Konasana. You can broaden the outer knee, tone the inner knee. And then we'll bring the knees toward each other, hug the knees. And then bring both feet back to the ground. Look, take the pelvis off the blankets so you can slide them out of the way. Bring the pelvis to the ground, okay? And then one more thing, let's bring the, can you bring the right heel toward the left sit bone. And then you can, you might grab the left foot and take the right knee down. So there's an opening at the front of the right hip. And switch sides, right foot comes back up, left foot slides under, I might grab my left foot and then um, take the 
the left knee down towards the ground. And then we're going to bring both feet to the ground, but let's walk the feet wider, knees together. Feet are wide, knees are together, and take the arms, reach them overhead, palms toward the ceiling. Then we're going to walk the feet back toward each other and come to Shavasana. So you're welcome to take any shape that feels soothing to you for your Shavasana. And then allowing your breath to deepen. You can make a mindful transition over to one side. And use the support of your arms to come back to sitting. Join your hands in front of your heart. I'm just confirming your abilities 
your willingness. Even with everything else going on, a, a commitment to goodness. Namaste. Thank you for being here this morning. <laughs> Diego. Diego, he didn't do a lot of moving around right now, I did. Stop that recording.